Welcome to Unit 7, Working with Parliamentarians to Increase the Demand for Evaluation. My name is Kabir Hashim. I'm a member of Parliament from Sri Lanka. This video lecture will take you through the following topics. The importance of engaging parliamentarians in evaluation. Parliamentarians work on increasing the demand for evaluation around the world. Parliamentarians' role in the development of national evaluation policies and the role of WOPIR, voluntary organizations of professional evaluators, in supporting them. Identifying strategic entry points to engage with parliamentarians. And finally, tips to meaningfully engage with parliamentarians. So let's look at the first topic, the importance of engaging parliamentarians in evaluation. Now the importance of engaging parliamentarians in evaluation, they have the great, the great need for verified data and information. And then we have the users of evaluation. Well, when we put both these points together, uh, we can just Remember something where Winston Churchill once said that true genius resides in the capacity for evaluation of uncertain, hazardous, and conflicting information. What you see in the picture there depicts this. It's like an overload of information. In the world today, there's a whole overload of information, and that's what the photo depicts, where the need is for verified data and information that is easily accessible and useful and usable. So this is very important. Then we come on to looking at the greater need, the under greater need for verified data and information. When we look at this, one of the important things is that parliamentarians are the first pillar to approve or allocate resources for development initiatives in their country through parliamentary procedures. Therefore, parliamentarians should be well informed with up-to-date information about effective initiatives and development programs through evaluation so that resources are wisely invested in the country. Therefore, it is very important about engaging parliamentarians here. In the same again, if you look at the users of evaluation, parliamentarians have the opportunity and the authority to supervise and question progress of any development initiatives and the use of public funds in the country. Therefore, relevant data and information are useful to properly monitor the progress through the parliamentarian. So it's very important for parliamentarians. When you look at the third point in this support establishment of national evaluation policy and system, well, here, then once again, you look at how important the role of the parliamentarian is. Because the parliamentarians support the executive, who in turn rely on parliament to pass laws and allocate resources. Therefore, parliamentarians are the key to influence the executive regarding the establishment of a national evaluation policy in each of their parliaments and in their countries. The next point is strengthen evidence-based policy making. Now, evidence-based policy-making becomes very important. Parliamentarians are the key in making legislation and policy in their country. It is important that policy and legislation is evidence-based so that they are useful for and contribute to make a difference in the country. Reducing the gap between the evaluation community and policymakers is the next and last point. There is a visible disconnect between parliamentarians and the evaluation community that should be bridged if evaluation is to become an effective and well-used tool for evidence-based decision-making. That's one of the most important things that should happen. So how to bring this together becomes very important to bridge this gap. I would like now to look at moving on from here to the next topic. Parliamentarians work on increasing the demand for evaluation. Now, under this topic, when you look at 
the picture, this shows a team of parliamentarians from the South Asian region uh, who have taken part in uh, a workshop and an evaluation conference. This was taken, this photograph was taken in the parliament of Sri Lanka. And along with us are members representing the UN system, the evaluation officers. So there is a, a bonding of evaluation experts with parliamentarians. Well, parliamentarians since 2013 have come together and work together to start connecting with the evaluation community. Parliamentarians have conducted panels and presentations at 10 international evaluation conferences. And out of these, the first one that all set it all off was the Community of Evaluation Conclave, which was in, held in Kathmandu in Nepal in February 2013. This was followed but the, at the first round, there were just three parliamentarians who took part in the next round. The Sri Lanka Evaluation Association Eval, Evaluation Conference, which was held in Colombo, Sri Lanka, in July 2013, had eight parliamentarians representing South Asian countries. Then there was a National Evaluation Conference held in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in September 2013, followed by the third monitoring and evaluation forum in Manila, Philippines, in November 2013. Subsequently, there was a seventh AFIA conference in Yaoundé, Cameroon, in March 2014, and then the first evaluation conclave in Islamabad, Pakistan, in March 2014. There was a sixth Malaysian evaluation society conference in Kuala Lumpur in March 2014. Then there was the UNEC high-level meeting, the United Nations Evaluation Group high-level meeting in Bangkok, Thailand, in April 2014, and the United Kingdom Evaluation Society Conference in London, United Kingdom, in April 2014. And believe me, in each one of these, there were at least one parliamentarian or a group of parliamentarians who really participated, worked together with the evaluation specialists, and contributed had panel discussions to bring in parliamentarians and policymakers into the world of evaluation. This is groundbreaking. This slide shows you the Yaoundé Declaration issued by African parliamentarians, the photograph taken in Cameroon, where a group of parliamentarians from the African nations came together to make a declaration that each of their countries will promote the culture of evaluation and to work towards establishing a national evaluation policy in their respective countries and for parliamentarians to be actively involved in using evaluation. This was also groundbreaking. So, in early 2013, a group of parliamentarians changed the perception that politicians and parliamentarians do not participate in evaluation activities. They, in fact, started participating and conducting panel discussions at various conferences, and this has been a great progress in the last couple of, in the last couple of months. If you look at the slide, the next slide, it shows you in March 2013, where Parliamentarians Forum for Development Evaluation of South Asia started working. Then in April 2013, there was a public hearing at the European Parliament Parliament, in August 2013, a group of parliamentarians initiated by the Pakistan Evaluation Network started working together to promote evaluation. Then in March 2014, the African Parliamentarians Network on Development Evaluation was established in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and in April 2014, Women's Parliamentarians Group initiated in Middle East and North Africa, which is known as the MENA region. This is really groundbreaking. Now, when we look at the next topic, the next topic is the parliamentarian's role in the development of national evaluation policies. This is a very critical area, the national evaluation policies. And if you move to the next slide, you look at that slide, you could see numbers. In fact, it was the Parliamentary Forum for Development Evaluation of South Asia, which subsequently became linked with the other parliamentarians forums, which set up a mapping exercise which was conducted by an expert consultant on the initiative of the Parliamentary Forum for Development Evaluation. 
and which did a study on the global situation of national evaluation policies. And when you look at this slide, it shows you very clearly that there are only 20 countries the world over which has a legislated national evaluation policy, which is in, in the constitution. And there are 34 countries which have policy, but there, which have no policy, but they conduct evaluations nonetheless on their own without a strong policy. Then there are 23 countries which are now currently engaged in looking at developing policy. For example, the Philippines is almost ready to launch its policy, but they're still in the developing stage. But still, there are 38 countries which have absolutely no national evaluation policy in place. So this is very important. And this is one of the reasons why parliamentarians are getting engaged now to look at making these changes. And why, why do we think national evaluation policies are important? It is something that's very important for a country to ensure that evaluation gets institutionalized. Now looking at the next slide, how is this that a national evaluation policy uh, development process takes place? Well, how it really takes place is that, you know, you have to move and get everybody together. One is to get all stakeholders to come together. Now, when you get all, when you mean all stakeholders, it means civil society, the evaluation community, the academia, think tanks, the parliamentarians or policy makers, all these stakeholders need to come together to agree that a national evaluation policy of critical importance in a country. Once that agreement and that consensus is there, you start developing a draft policy through a consultation process. This has happened in many countries. By doing the draft policy, they need, you need support. Most especially, the parliamentarians need to be supported to advocate for national evaluation policy in the parliament. For this, you need to find champions, political champions, who voice the need for a national evaluation policy and convince their colleagues to ensure that the policy is legislated. Once there are enough political champions who speak up, the draft policy can be submitted to parliament with support from parliamentarians. And then you get the other parliamentarians on board, you have a national evaluation policy in place. Now why is it important to have a national evaluation policy uh, in a country? What's the importance of it? Well, a national evaluation policy will make it mandatory to have monitoring and evaluation systems within the public sector development programs. Secondly, a national evaluation policy will ensure that government annual budgets will be on performance-based budgeting so that there will be efficiency in fund allocation. Thirdly, funds allocated for evaluation capacity development and evaluation-related activity will become mandatory through legislation. And finally, there will be political champions who are built up and parliament will lead the process of evaluation once you have a national evaluation policy in place. So it, it, you would understand, understand how important it is to establish a national evaluation policy in each of your countries. Looking at the next slide, which talks about the parliamentarians' role in the development of national evaluation policies. It's very important to look at uh, national evaluation policies and the reasons for it. There are 10 reasons for parliamentarians to engage in the national evaluation policy process. One is to ensure that the country's development is in the right direction and informed by evidence. Because most of most countries, especially the develop, uh, developing countries, work with limited funds. Most of the funds they get for development is mostly on foreign loans or aid. These monies have to be used wisely. The projects that are being invested have to be, and be ensured that they follow the right direction, that it achieves the goals and targets that it was first set out to do. And most often, you can only ensure that you are achieving your goals and targets provided you have a proper monitoring and evaluation system established. 
Another reason, the second reason, is to allocate national resources wisely. Limited resources enforce countries to make sure that those limited resources are invested wisely. And a proper evaluation system established in your country will ensure that the country will follow the right path. Third reason is to properly monitor the progress of development through the parliament. It is finally the owners of parliament, the members of parliament who look at projects, the public sector development projects, and whether they have been implemented properly, whether they have achieved their goals, and whether society has really benefited. So a national evaluation policy ensures that parliament is always aware of using these tools to ensure that, that goals are achieved. Four, to make evidence-based policies and legislation is very critical. Most often, in most cases in Parliament, the parliamentarians or the policy makers don't have sufficient data or, in or information to make evidence-based policies and legislation. But a national evaluation policy will make it mandatory that Parliament is fed with the right information all the time. Five, to effectively respond to citizens' demands. Finally, all policymakers or parliamentarians, their final objective is to ensure that the citizens that they represent are served effectively and efficiently. So a national evaluation policy supports this. Six, to promote equity and human rights, which is very, a very important part of a parliamentarian's work. Seven, to advocate with the executive on the national evaluation policy, because it's the parliament that can influence the executive to have the national evaluation policy in place and to ensure that funding is given through parliament for evaluation. Eight, seven, eight, to evaluate millennium development goals and set new targets for sustainable development goals. It's very important with today's targets very clearly set with the MDGs that one way of achieving the MDGs is to ensure that there is proper evaluation and proper monitoring of all projects that are working in the country. Nine, to effectively engage in parliamentary committees. Most often parliamentarians need information, they need reports to engage in the oversight committees that they represent to be able to question government officials on the progress of public sector projects. And for this, a national evaluation policy gives them the strength and the teeth to be fed with the right information at the right time. And finally, number 10, to show voters their achievements and be able to tell the voters that they have done their job in parliament, which results in those parliamentarians being re-elected back again in subsequent elections. So it is actually a political tool that can finally help a parliamentarian to serve his constituency much better. When we go on to the next slide, we look at the parliamentarian's role in the development of national evaluation policies. There is the role of the voluntary organization of professional evaluation societies in engaging parliamentarians in evaluation. The WOPEs are a very important uh, set of uh, associations and organizations which can work together with parliamentarians. The voluntary organizations of professional evaluation societies can actually support capacity building of parliamentarians and parliaments in evaluation. Because one of the uh, shortcomings that exists right now is the capacity. There has to be a lot of capacity building of not only parliament, parliamentarians, but parliament itself in supporting evaluation work. The next thing is that WOPEs can also provide technical inputs on evaluation to parliamentarians because the WOPEs consist of professional evaluators who can support parliamentarians and give them technical support on the tools that are used for evaluation. Third thing is to engage parliamentarians in WOPEs, example by reserving a board seat for parliamentarians. Every or almost every country has a national evaluation association in place, even if they don't have an evaluation policy in place. 
and it is recommended the parliamentarians forum recommends that that in every national evaluation association or society there should be a uh, seat allocated for parliamentarians who would attend monthly meetings with the voters and discuss matters related to evaluation and how parliament can be strengthened in terms of capacity building and in so many other ways so there would be a bond between the evaluation community and parliamentarians and finally to support parliamentarians to advocate for a national evaluation policy in parliament that is very important because the voters can help lobby support the parliamentarians or the political champions to promote national evaluation policies within their own parliaments again the voters can also support parliamentarians in some other way that in raising awareness on the role of parliamentarians in evaluation example through evaluation conferences meetings and global forums this is very important and the voters have the opportunity of doing a lot of lobbying the next one is to generate knowledge on engaging parliamentarians in evaluation to have support them with knowledge and uh, technical know how so that parliamentarians also can play a greater role in using these tools finally share information on global trends in institutionalizing evaluation with parliamentarians we go to the next topic which is identifying strategic entry points to engage with parliamentarians now here in this slide if you see there are many strategies that we identified as entry points to engage with parliamentarians one is establish a channel of communication with the leadership it is important that the voters or the evaluation community works with political leaders usually it is very important to identify key people in parliaments who would be champions of evaluation in most countries where national evaluation policies were established there have been a handful of political champions who took the lead and then lobbied for evaluation policies that's very important to identify uh, and have a channel of communication with the leadership the next is to identify and support individual champions within parliaments which again brings you in, into the same line to work with selected champions who would then take the work forward and build up the rapport with other parliamentarians next is to create or a creation of a network of parliamentarians usually you would not have the entire group of parliamentarians coming together and working in one line for evaluation but there would be a network of parliamentarians irrespective of which party they belong to but who believe that evaluation is important so it's important to create this network it is also important to establish cooperation with parliamentary committees because parliamentary committees or the oversight committees are the ones that usually take up the reports the evaluation reports and use them and who have the responsibility of looking at monitoring and evaluating public sector projects is also the responsibility of engaging with new parliamentarians as we all know parliamentarians are not permanent they keep changing the life span or the terms are limited so there are new people coming all the time and it is always important to engage with the new parliamentarians it's also important to use evidence from evaluation to push for adoption for of proposed bills it's always the best way to have evidence based uh, policy and for that evaluation is an important tool where parliamentarians can lobby for a bill that they believe in where they have sufficient evidence to show that a bill would be useful to a community or to a country and finally to be in contact with parliamentary staff all the time so that they understand what the ultimate goal of a national evaluation policy 
is for a country and what role parliament would play in establishing that national evaluation policy. It is important to know that whatever we do, we should keep in mind that one should ensure a non-partisan approach. That is very important because parliament usually consists of a group of different parties represented by different parliamentarians. There would be a government, there would be an opposition, there would be other minority parties. And it is important to have the buy-in of all these different groups. Therefore, lobbying must be done in an unbiased manner because evaluation is a tool that would be useful for a government or for the opposition or for any independent party because finally for a parliamentarian or for his party that he represents he would be able to use enough material, data and evidence to prove a point in parliament. Finally, we come to tips to meaningfully engage with parliamentarians. How do we do this? If you look at this slide which is quite colourful and if you look at the first uh, uh, graphic uh, demonstration of a series of files loaded with files. What do you think? What 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 does what comes into your mind? The first thing is to look at a, you see a whole sheet of papers, a whole lot of reading material. This is one of the key factors because one of the biggest problems everybody has today as uh, politicians is time. Most politicians don't have time to read. Usually, a parliamentarian would have only 10 minutes in a day to re have reading time. That would include reading the newspapers. And that's really true because most parliamentarians are busy with their constituents, busy with so much of work. So no parliamentarian is going to read a 100-page evaluation report. It's a waste of time. That is why it's important that you establish one of the recommendations that the parliamentary forum is trying to bring out is to establish a monitoring and evaluation unit within each parliament, which would simplify sophisticated evaluation reports, have a concise summary, a one or two page summary, which would give the crux of that evaluation report, which gives sufficient data for the parliamentarian to use when he is in an oversight committee or when he is in a debate to prove whether, project, whether a project has been effective or not. So that's very important. The second picture that you see there with a the question mark really says that there should be technical aspects of evaluation that are looked into carefully and those technical aspects should be available for parliament and for parliamentarians alike so that they would understand those technical aspects of evaluation. When you look at the third picture which has a magnifying glass, what it really means there is the need for disaggregated data for parliamentarians. Parliamentarians need disaggregated data from their from different districts, from different provinces, from different projects, so that they can look at this disaggregated data and use it to be able to understand whether their goals and targets are being achieved uh, through time. So that's very important. Then we see the next fourth picture where there is a cross section of different colored uh, people or figures, which really what it represents or what it means is to tell you that you have to be bipartisan, you need to have everybody coming together on the same page. And then the next picture indicates that everybody comes together to be able to make a very uh, a simple, understandable evaluation report that is understood easily by everybody. And finally, it shows that once you understand an evaluation report, once you have simplified data, once you have evidence-based policy making, everybody benefits. Or it's not only the, the parliamentarians that they benefit, but their constituents their people, their society, benefits as well. So, keep in mind, parliamentarians need to be supported 
in strengthening national evaluation policies. Voters can be effective facilitators in helping parliamentarians in his work. What we believe is that there has been a disconnect between the evaluation community and the parliamentarians. Finally, if evaluation, if the culture of evaluation was to be effective, if evaluation reports were going to be useful, if all the terms of evaluation reports are going to be used effectively, then it is essential that parliamentarians or parliaments or policy makers are engaged effectively in evaluation because if the majority of evaluation reports end up the final users, the ones who can make a difference on the evaluation report, finally the ones who can make differences and make decisions are the parliamentarians themselves. So it becomes very important for parliamentarians to be engaged. Now, from one side, there has been an initiative from the parliamentarians, from different parliaments in the world, to engage with the evaluation community. It is also the onus of the evaluation community to respond and to work together. So, at the end of this unit, I hope you've understood how important it is that evaluation as a tool would strengthen parliaments. That, national, that a national evaluation policy that is legislated will institutionalize evaluation in your country and that all parliamentarians should get engaged in this process and that there should be, in the long term, we should lobby for a monitoring and evaluation unit within each parliament which would simplify the technical aspects of evaluation and make it easy for parliamentarians to use the data that is provided by evaluation. So, finally, thank you for taking this video lecture.